punch as this guy puts his nose back in place. A knockout comes out, get, comes out. He's been fighting off the three guys, and you look completely unharmed. <laughs> and he says, I'm, I'm going to get you all back for this three-on-one BS. You know, when I get out of lockdown, I'm going to get everyone back. Um, yeah, so anything can happen at any time. But yeah, I got through it by <laughs> making alliances with the right people and stuff like that. That brings me to a whole other question. When you finally got out, and you weren't in that totally heightened state of freaking out 24-7, how did you cope with just normal, calm, everyday life? All right, well, getting out, first of all, is weird because you know, the time range of what you're thinking about changes the months before you're getting out. It's like every day, you know, you're just trying to get through the day. And with me, I was just reading, writing, studying, and trying to make the most of it. And all of a sudden, you're thinking about getting out. How long are you going to be in here? What are you going to do? You know, how are you going to get work, support yourself? Got all my assets and money overseas. Um, so it got, it got weirder and weirder and weirder for me to like deal with that mentally. And I'm almost getting out and I'm thinking, people are telling me challenges will arise just before you get out. Don't get in any trouble or fights because you'll get more time. Because if you get in a fight and it gets recorded on CCTV, it's another five year sentence. So I get assigned to kitchen work towards, I'm almost about to get out and I get assigned to kitchen work. They're, they're not, you know, believing my waiver anymore from work. So I go to the kitchen. And I sit down on the crate, and this guy, who's done about 30 years, he extended his stay by murdering two prisoners in the prison, in the prison system, said to me, that's my seat, uh, expletive, you know, get the hell off it or else I'm going to, you know, it's going to be a problem. And all the prisoners stop to see how I'm going to react, and I'm just about to get out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, you know what I'm going to do? If I'd have got up, I would have been considered a punk and everyone would have preyed on me. If I stayed down, this guy's already got a track record for murdering two prisoners. You know, I could possibly get stabbed by this guy. I had no choice, I had to sit down. Now, I was getting, I was in minimum security by this point, and this guy was getting out as well soon. So that had my favour. And I also had this guy, my, a mixed martial arts guy, was um, like my personal trainer, he was a prisoner. So he was coaching me, you know, if this guy comes in, do this move and this karate move and all this stuff. And it was ongoing for a little bit, but it, it blew over because he was getting out. He'd done decades and he just didn't want to get, I know, another 10, 20 year sentence by attacking me. So I was just lucky. But that was completely through my mind again. So I had, um, there was a brilliant psychotherapist in there. Most of the prison staff have been barred from public practice. No, they've been lawsuited out of public practice, the, the prison medical staff. <laughs> so it's the bottom of the barrel. They mostly, they just want to, they just want, if you've got a, a mental health issue, they want you to take pills because they've experimented with pharmaceutical companies, you know, on the side effects. It's institutional use. You're not considered a human being. It's institutional use. They can do whatever they want. So they're all pushing pills on you. Except there's one absolutely brilliant psychotherapist. He was a neuroscientist. He was into yoga philosophy, all this stuff, and he criticised the pharmaceutical companies. I just really related to this guy, and he was counselling me about how to get my frame of mind into dealing with, with getting released. And he would say, you know, whatever you're reading this week, write down your favourite quotes, and we'll discuss them, and we'll discuss how you can use them in your life when you're getting out, you know, your favourite quotes in philosophy and psychology and stuff like that. The Epictetus quote was one that I discussed with him that I mentioned earlier. This doctor really helped me change the way I think. And I still think about him to this day. And I'd love to contact him and thank him. But I don't know how to get a hold of him. 